Good morning, everybody. My name is Carla, and you have reached my floss tube channel, Carla Being Crafty, where I talk about mostly cross stitch, but also other crafts that I enjoy, which lately has been paper crafting and creating little golden book um, junk journals, and also a little bit of life thrown in. Um, today is my floss tube number 135, and it is Sunday. It is April 3rd. Uh, happy April, everybody. Um, and um, I want to say welcome. Welcome to my channel. If this is your first time finding the channel, I hope that you like what you see. Want to hit like and subscribe. And thank you so much for coming by. Um, if you are a returning viewer, one of my floss tube friends, then um, I also want to say welcome today. And thank you so much for being here and spending this time with me. Um, I enjoy spending this time with you every week so much. And um, as I work on stuff during the week, um, you're always in the back of my mind that I'm going to enjoy showing you what I did. So um, we have had weird Southern California weather all week, up and down. Um, it was hot at the beginning of the week, and then the temperature dropped a lot um, on was it Thursday, it went down into the 60s. Um, and it's it's overcast today. It was overcast yesterday. We haven't really gotten any rain to speak of, which is bad because we need it. But um, yeah, so and then it's supposed to climb back up and it's supposed to be in the 90s by the end of the week next week. So, you know, I hate it when the weather's jumping around like this. It just doesn't do my body good. Let's just say I end up being achy and, you know allergies, whatever, you know, it's just, it's hard. And I don't know how to dress in the morning. Do I bring a jacket? Do I not bring a jacket? You know, first world problems. But um, anyway, that's how our Southern California weather has been. And um, I have a feeling it's going to continue to be that way. So, you know, it knows what it is. It's where I live. Um, I wanted to give you guys a Zoom reminder, um, which I guess I'll be doing probably every video until we have our next our next Zoom. Um, it is scheduled for Saturday, uh, April 30th um, at 10 a.m. Pacific time. If you're interested in joining us for the Zoom, um, I've had a lot of fun doing it and um, I think that people are enjoying it too because they keep coming back. So um, it's just a very casual two to three hours uh, sitting on Zoom and stitching and chit-chatting about everything and nothing and um, just kind of enjoying being together and doing our little crafting things. Um, we've had people on there who are stitching, people who are... Uh, knitting, um, doing other crafts, um, coloring. My friend was coloring last week because she just kind of wanted to join and didn't, wasn't in that much of a crafty mode that day. Um, she's done sewing. Um, I've done paper crafting. So yeah, it's just, it's a fun, casual way to just get together with some stitchy friends that you can't necessarily meet up with in real life and um, enjoy some time together. So again, that will be April 30th after Passover, after Easter is over and um, after my mom's birthday. And um, yeah, so I'm trying a Saturday morning this time to see um, how people like that. Um, so I hope that a bunch of you can join me. And I don't even know if I said, if you're interested, then please uh, message me, private message me on Instagram and I will give you the code and the... Um, it's almost like a weird line on my arm. Weird. Okay. Um, the code and uh, the meeting ID. So, yeah, message me on Instagram for that. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't really have a bunch of stuff to talk about uh, preamble-wise. It was a long work week. Um, it was a stressful work week uh, because I had a lot of stuff to do. And I am on officially on jury duty next week. Um, but it's... The way that they do jury duty in Southern California um, is oftentimes you get on call in jury duty, which sounds like it would be easier in that you don't have to necessarily go to the courthouse. But the problem is, is you don't know from day to day whether you have to go to the courthouse or not. So I had to call um, Friday evening at like five o'clock, either call or you go online uh, to see if you're required to go in Monday. And my group, it, 
you know, the next instruction was call again on Monday. So I do know I'm going to be at work Monday, but I don't know about the rest of the week. Of course, I didn't know that until five o'clock. So I had to operate on the assumption that I wasn't going to be at work on Monday, which means I had to do all of this stuff that I wouldn't necessarily have to like, you know, prepare just in case I wasn't there. So we have a client coming in Monday, so I had to get all the paperwork done for that, which I would have done anyway. But then I had to do like, if I'm not there, this is how you process it. You know, it's just, it was a pain. And um, my boss tends to like freak out a tiny little bit when I'm not going to be in the office. Um, you know, he can leave and I can run the office. I leave and he gets freaked out. So, you know, I guess that's, that's how it is when you are a support person. Um, Anyway, so it was a long week. It was a long, tiring week. Um, and I was really glad to see the weekend come. Um, yesterday, I did a bunch of work sitting here because I got engrossed in doing my little golden books. And um, I probably sat too long because I ended up kind of with backaches and stuff. So today, I'm going to really have to maybe not do paper crafting, just stitch and relax. And then in between, do the few chores that are absolutely required. My apartment really needs... A lot of help um, and I just don't have the energy I'm really looking to maybe take like a staycation week um, coming up soon so that I can really get some stuff done that I just don't seem to be able to have the energy to do on the weekend um, so I want more than more than two days in a row off is what I'm saying um, so that I can put my apartment together the way I want it to do some you know some deep cleaning or <laughs> deep organizing or whatever and then um move forward and feel a little bit less overwhelmed that's that's my hope so i'm looking into maybe taking taking some time in the next uh month or so um but uh yeah so that's uh that's really it for the updates let's let's get on to to sharing some crafting so as i said i've been really kind of uh focusing on and excited about this little golden book uh, journal journey that I have been taking. Um, and I do want to to say very emphatically that everything I'm doing are, you know, ideas gleaned from watching a bunch of other people's videos and kind of culling different people's um, ideas and letting it spark my own creativity and stuff. It's like, I'm not you know, creating anything out of thin air. It's all, you know, ideas that are kind of gathered and collated and reworked a little bit from other people's stuff. So I don't want to take credit where it isn't due that I'm some like, you know, journal making savant or something. I'm not. I'm, I, I watch, um, I've watched several different channels to get different ideas, um, from journal type channels to, uh, just like paper folding channels because I want to get a couple paper interesting ways to to make some paper things to put in the books um, and then my other idea I did talk about this a little bit last week is I really wanted to get kind of what I'm calling like a prototype like I want to make the same type of pages you know I want to do the same thing in each journal so I don't have to think about it too much so I can have a list um, and then but then just tailor it to each book um, and of course the little stick-ins and tags and all that kind of stuff would be different you know but I, I want that basic idea to be the same and I kind of developed it I think I got I got down to what I like um, what is fairly easy to do um, and not too time-consuming etc so I've I've got three books um, well I've got two books that are all that are all the pages are are put together but they're, they're not sewn in and then I have one completed book so I'm gonna show you this and then um, yeah I'm, I'm excited about it and I have a box full of little golden books uh, I still have some more coming but I did get my first um, shipment of the really inexpensive ones that I got in a lot and um, I would say half of the books I'm excited about making books out of the other half I'm iffy um I did get a lot of Christmas stuff that I'm not I'm not particularly interested in however I know that there are people out there who might enjoy them so um so I will eventually make those as well probably um so when I pick a book my first thing that I want to do is kind of get um I don't want to say color scheme but I want to pick I pick two colors 
to kind of be my focus colors. And that way when I'm going through my papers and everything, it kind of narrows it down. And, um, and so I can pick coordinating papers based on those two colors. So like uh, for Lilo and Stitch, I did like blue and purple. Um, for Inside Out, I did purple and green. And I did the Princess and the Pea. And I did pink and green. So some of it has to do with like what the colors are. Well, most of it has to do with what the colors are in the illustrations and stuff like that. Um, okay. So as I said, the outside of the book. Um, what I'm doing, and again, I'm doing this on all of them because I have my system. So I am doing the spine in such a way that I'm keeping the iconic golden strip. Um, so I'm cutting the spine in half to, well, I'm, first of all, I'm uh, getting the staple out. There's two staples in a golden book. Um, and then once the signatures are out, then I'm cutting the spine in half so that I can preserve the um the strip and as i showed you guys last week let me show you in this one i am then making kind of an internal spine so there's nothing on the outside that's covering the um sp the strip um so the internal spine is what's keeping it together um it is a i think one and a half inch spine with an inch on each side. The reason I did two and a half inches is because I'm using um, jelly rolls. Um, I figured that would be the easiest thing for me. I didn't have to cut a bunch of fabric. I just got, uh, I had a jelly roll and then I got some jelly rolls from Joanne that were on sale. Um, so I have a variety of colors and um, patterns and stuff like that. And then I'm using those jelly rolls. So I take one jelly roll strip and I cut two 16 inch lengths, or a little bit over 16 inch actually, and then I'm left with a piece. So I use two, the two 16 inch stri strips to make the spine, and then the leftover piece goes on the inside in different places. Um, this one is probably the messiest one that I've done because I actually cut the strips too short and had to patch. But it doesn't really matter how messy it looks at this process because it does get kind of covered. Um, so it gets uh, glued and taped down. Um, secured and then I'm using some kind of lace or trim just to kind of cover the edges so that's how my spine is being done <clears throat> on all the books I have decided to put these corner mark the corner protectors on because I just really like the way that they look and I've been grommeting them with like a coordinating color so that I can put ribbon the ribbon tie again because I really like how that looks and then the spine when I have sewn in my signatures I'm using this method of um, putting coordinating buttons now as you can see this is my first one I did and I don't think that I spaced this exactly right I think this should be over a little bit more like both of them should be over a little bit more but again, it's the first one. This one's gonna go for my knee, uh, go to my niece because Lila and Stitch is her her favorite. So um, I was excited to work on that one so that I could bring it to her when I go see them. Okay, so I have two signatures, and I have two signatures because there's two signatures in the golden book. So I didn't add anything extra. I just added pages to those each of the signatures. So. And as I said, I have like a prototype or a way I'm doing it. So they're all basically the same. So my first page is a um, scrapbook paper that's folded up to, to make a pocket. And um, I actually kind of filled a bunch of the pockets in this particular one. Um, basically, I had some different things that all have pineapples on them. And I picked all the pineapple stuff because Lila and Stitch is Hawaii. So I have this really cute little card that says, follow your dreams, they know the way. Okay, next page is a regular piece of notebook paper, but I happened to get notebook paper that was like this pretty marble color, multicolored. So I used that. Um, I'm kind of tearing the edge of that one. And then we have one of the book pages. Then I have a pad of six by eight 
scrapbook paper um, one-sided, but I think that's good because you can still journal on the other side then or write or add stickers or whatever the person who gets it wants to do. Um, so I have one of those cut uh, folded in half. Then I have this page. This is a uh, four by 12 piece of scrapbook paper um, that is the leftover from another piece you'll see uh, further in the book. Um, and I just added a bit of the spine fabric here. Regular page, notebook page. Um, okay, this is a really cool folding technique that I saw in a video and wanted to recreate. So I, what I'm using for this is I'm using a piece of a 12 by 12 double-sided scrapbook paper. Um, and you'll also notice that when I'm using these 12 by 12 pieces and I'm not using the full piece here, you'll see the other pieces further in the book. So I'm kind of trying to use up all of the, the pieces that I'm using. I've ended up using five five double-sided 12 by 12s, one single-sided 12 by 12, one 12 by 12 that's like this pastel shimmer paper that I have, um, two six by six one-sided one papers, and then four, four uh, printer papers, one piece of graph paper, um, one doily, one bag, and I think that's it. Okay, so are you ready? Look at this folding technique. So you can journal here and here and on here, and then when it folds up, I just think that's really cool. This one took me a bit to figure out how to do it properly, and I'm still learning, but. Okay, so then this is the uh, graph paper. We have a piece of <clears throat> Uh, one size scrapbook paper that this is actually the other side of something that's cool um, we've got the book page and we're in the middle of the signature I have a bag with a uh, bookmark in it um, again another leftover piece from another thing in the book um, there's the other half of the bag with some pineapple cards. This one just has a plain sort of a color back. <clears throat> okay, then this page, <clears throat> when you open it, this is another folding, folding technique that I saw online. They call it like a maze fold. And I just think that's cool for all these little, little places to write notes and cool little things. Um, I just put some washi tape on this page. Uh oh, okay. Um, this is just a little pocket in here. I added just a taggy thing that I made. Another piece of notebook paper. And we come to the end of the first signature and with this paper with the pocket. And then on the back of this, I have a Turkish map folded page, which also is a nice little journaling spot. Then we get to the second signature. We have this page, which I've been decorating on all of them with either uh, some kind of funky ribbon or something like that. Another um, printer page. I feel like these, I need to do something to the edge. I either need to rip them or add a washi tape or something to the edges of these plain papers. I don't like them completely plain. This one, I added some lace washi tape. Yeah, see, I think that looks better than just the plain. Um, I have a coloring book page in each book. A lace doily. A folded pocket. I like this fold. It looks like kind of like a basket. The middle of the signature has this folded pocket. So this is actually... Uh, like you could put something through the side pocket 
Um, you can tuck in here, you can tuck in there. So there's all kinds of places for, for treasures in that one. I just made like a corner tuck up pocket and I made this with a scrap from the trims of the other papers. Put a little bit of the binder or the spine fabric again. <clears throat> and then this is kind of an opening like that. And that is it. So that <clears throat> is my basic uh, little golden book journal. Um, there's all kinds of tech places and little tags and things I can add and all kinds of little embellishments, but this is the basic thing. Um, and you can see, so that was like, I used purples, purples and blues and a little bit of green, um, kind of the aqua colors. But like this one is the princess and the pea and I used things that were a lot more pink, Papers that were more pink and green. And it's the same, the same things in it. Well, you know, with different colors, it makes it feel much different. They're not, um, <coughs> they're not sewn. Oops. So, so that's that one <clears throat> with the pinks. And then, oops. And then inside out, this is the one for my friend Tracy. I know she watches my videos, so if you're watching Tracy, this is the one that you're gonna get eventually when I get it all put together. And this, I use greens and purples because it kind of goes with uh, the colors of the book. Plus, I thought it was an added cuteness that green and purple uh, Tracy and I met, we were doing the Wizard of Oz together when we were sophomores in high school. And <clears throat> so we were both in kind of like the chorus and played all the different, like the Winkies and the Munchkins and everything. And um, was it the Winkies or the Munchkins? I think it was the Winkies that where everything was green and purple. I know there was one of them that we had to have green and purple. Our costumes were all green and purple. So that kind of reminded me of, of that as well. So anyway. So that is what I was working on yesterday. Um, as I continue, I think it's gonna get faster for me to do them. Um, I enjoyed the whole thing. I didn't find very much frustrating. It was a little bit harder to do the the, the binding on this because I was using this like waxed, wax thread that I got. Um, and the wax thread was harder to work with. I think it's gonna create like a stronger hold but it was difficult to work with because it doesn't pull, it sticks to itself. So um, yeah, so that was a little bit more difficult, but anyway, that's what I'm doing. Um, I know they're not perfect, but um, I am enjoying them and I think I think they're cute and I think anybody who kind of likes the idea of a junk journal will enjoy them and enjoy adding, adding to them and putting things in and tucking things in. And um, if you use them as a stitchy journal, there's lots of places to, uh, to put your stitching if you're just using it as you know just a memory journal there's lots of places to write and add and tuck and I think that I think that's the point of them right so I'm having fun making them and hopefully when I start giving them away or selling them if that comes to that um, that the people who get them will enjoy them as much as I've enjoyed making them so that is the the junk journal the little golden book junk journal stuff that I have been doing uh, Mostly yesterday, <laughs> but I've been thinking about it a lot all week and learning the different folding techniques and everything. Okay, <clears throat> so now back to the stitching, which I've also been doing all week um, along with. Uh, so I did have two new starts this week because we started a new month. Um, so you guys know about both of them, but hopefully you are interested in seeing them as well. They're not huge starts, of course. Um, but starts nonetheless. So this one is my little Snapdragon by Custom Crafts Inc. I'm calling him Jack. Jack the little Snapdragon. Uh, Snapdragon. Jack because Jack was my 
uh, my grandpa's name. And, well, I don't even need to unfold it because here's my start. That is this little snout. And I think it's going to look really, really pretty on this pink fabric, um, hand dyed by Rolanda, of course. Just look at this palette, though. When I put it together, look how pretty. It's just all purples and blues and greens. That's all is in this pattern. And I just think they're going to look really nice on the, the pink and white fabric. So yeah, this palette I think is really pretty and um, so I didn't get a lot of stitching done because the night that I started this, um, I also had to um, put all the flosses on the, the floss card. So that did take up some time. <laughs> okay. And then yesterday I started Bianca Bella. I was thinking about holding off and starting this like on my mom's birthday or whatever, but I figured I'd go ahead and start it. If I don't work on it again until her birthday, that's fine. But anyway, um, Bianca Bella by Mirabilia. Also on a hand dyed Ro by Rolanda fabric because, you know, I love those fabrics. And again, I don't have a huge start on it. I will be honest, after I worked on the books all day yesterday, I was really pretty tired and I... I don't want to say I had to force myself to stitch, but yeah, I did have to kind of force myself a little bit. So all I have is that little bit started. I figured I would use my Snow White Mermaid uh, needle minder that I made out of a clay flat back. It's appropriate, right? So yeah, it's in the, doesn't look like anything but a piece of blob on fabric stage. But the colors in this are really pretty too. All like aquas and purples. And then you've got the occasional like bright red and stuff and you know I put all of these strands of all these reds and they're going to be using like one strand to make that apple and that's about it <laughs> so a lot of that's going to go back in back in my floss um organizer when when we're done with this project in like three years or so okay oops um so those were my two new starts and then in addition to those, I had three whips um, last week. I did work on Catnap Fay again. Um, so I I finished this uh, diagonal last week. So this week I started another diagonal. Got a little bit on there. She might, I might put her, uh, put her to bed for a little bit now. Um, Pull her out again in a couple months just because I have these other ones to work on. Maybe she'll come out actually next month when I do the cat mania, but I think in April she's gonna take a little nap. And then, um, I worked on my autumn equinox pixie one day. I just haven't put her away yet because I enjoy her. This is uh, Bella Filipina. So I did these leaves her arm. I was trying to finish it, but I just ran out of time that night. Um, but I did do her arm and then these two leaves. And then I did some up in here too with the colors that were like left over from this. I 
I kind of like how um, with all of my fancy ladies that I have going, they're all kind of like different color themes. Um, so, you know, if I'm in the mood for like the magentas and the purples and stuff like that, I can do uh, Bellatrix. And if I'm in the mood for the aquas, I can do Bianca Bella. And if I want all the the rich autumny colors, the oranges and the and the pinks and the greens and stuff, then I've got autumny Equinox Pixie. It's kind of fun how I have that. It wasn't exactly planned that way, but. And then last but not least, I worked on Night Creatures, which I feel like I'm, I'm getting really close to a finish on. I mean, I've said this every time I've pulled it out this month, but, um, but I don't want to put it away for too long because as I said, this is earmarked for a finish this year, definitely. did I do? Oh, well, I brought the tree down. I think that that wasn't done before. So the tree, the color of the tree is finished. And then, um, so I was working with that color and I think, I think actually I finished that color. So I think that color is actually completed in the pattern. Somebody asked me what this needle minder said. Um, and it says every stitch you make, every skein you take, every strand you break, I'll be watching you. Baggy watching me stitch, basically. So that was it as far as my stitching. I don't know if I was quite as prolific with the stitching this week as I, as I sometimes am. Um, my mind was occupied a little bit with the paper stuff um, because it's new, uh, you know, that kind of thing. I did put up a video on Wednesday, if you didn't get a chance to check it out, on doing a one-strand loop start. Um, as I said in the video, it's not something that I made up or whatever. I saw it on Stitcherista's um, YouTube channel, and she saw it from somebody else. I can't remember who she said, so it's not... None of these ideas I don't think are, you know, original. That's how stuff happens in the craft world is it gets passed around and grows and people add their own touches and whatever, um, which I think is great. Uh, um, but I did put up a video for anybody who's interested. Um, I have another video planned as soon as I get all of my components. Um, I am going to do a video on all of the printed fabrics that I've gotten mostly from uh, Dove Stitch Fabric Flair and all of the um, the Mirabilia uh, Bewitching Pixies and all the ideas I have for putting them all together. Um, it's a little bit out there and uh, they may not all be successes, but I was inspired by uh, doing my Eva Across the Moon piece and um, so I've gotten a lot of printed fabrics. Um, some of them, uh, kind of surprising and, um, the series of the Bewitching Pixies of the ones I like, there's only a couple that I don't really like. Um, and there's one that actually, I realized I liked her, but I didn't like, she has these weird wing things on her back and I hate those. And I saw somebody who did them without that. I'm like, oh, I can just take it off. Um, so some of them I want to move around the animal companions and, um, but anyway, I'm excited to show you guys that, um, but I think I'm going to do like a separate video uh, as well and then show you. Um, I don't think I actually have anything new to show you that you haven't already seen yet, but when I put it all together, I'm going to put it together in a video, if that makes sense. Um, but one thing, one piece of haul that I did get this week that I wanted to share with you guys, because I'm being crazy here. I mean, I realize it. Um, Cade was having, Heaven and Earth Designs had a one day sale on, I think it was April 1st or April 31st or March 31st. I can't remember. Um, crashed their system. I went in right away when I got this email 
and it took me forever to put the thing in my cart and be able to pay for it because the system was just not doing well and and then I saw another upload that they extended the sale for another day because it's supposed to be a one day only thing they extended it for another day because their system was crashed um, but it, that's the nice thing about Heaven Earth Designs. If you do like them, just put your stuff in your, you know, put the stuff that you like in your in your wish cart or wish list. And then, you know, they have sales a lot. They have 50% off sales a lot. And um, go in and buy them then. That's kind of what I did. Um, I was going to buy more than one that I ended up just getting one, kind of reined it back in. Um, and I was going to have it mailed. And then I realized that the mailing price was like ridiculous. It was like almost $13 to mail a $7 pattern. Um, so I was like, nope, nope, nope. I will just download it and print it myself. So um, all of that to say, I got a mini, a mini, um, the mini flower kitty by Jeremiah Katner. And this is it. I am going to do it. This might be crazy too. I'm gonna do it on 28 to over one tent. And um, if I do it that small, um, it will be, pretty much eight inches square when it's done, which I think is cool because it'll fit in a regular frame. Um, but I don't know. I just, um, I was kind of branching out looking at other artists. Um, and I know I've seen a couple people do kind of like, I don't know what it's called, but it's the one that is swans and it looks like a girl doing yoga with swans. Um, I think, um, uh, 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 just, uh, just Marie does stuff. She just completed it. Um, and I know I've seen a couple other people stitching it. So I just looked at that artist and came across this one and I just thought it was really cute. And I don't know, it spoke to me. I like all the colors. I like the watercoloriness of it. And so, yeah. And, um, not only did I get it, but I think I'm going to start it next month. I know it's nuts. Um, I was thinking about getting a piece of easy guide and then I thought, you know what? I have so much fabric. Um, that's it's dumb to spend money on another piece of fabric. If I need it gridded, I can grid it myself. I have the fishing line to do it, and just pull a piece of 28 count even weave out of my stash. This is an unexciting piece, so you know what would I use this for except maybe to dye to make it more exciting. So I'll just use this, and it's a creamy color, which I think might be soothing or soothing or more soothing to work on than the bright white. Um, so I'm just gonna use this. Um, I did do a sample two over one tent to see what it looked like and to see if I could see it and I could and I did and I think it's gonna look fine. It's gonna look fully covered with two over one tent. And yeah, so I went through all of my flosses. Um, and these are the ones I have. And then I put in an order from one, two, three stitch of floss. Um, so I ended up getting about $25 with the floss. And I would say of all of those flosses that I'm ordering, I really only was missing, let's say maybe five to 10. The rest that I'm ordering is because if you'll see in here, there's like loose skeins or, you know, skeins that are by themselves. And then there's my, my skeins in with their card. Because what I do when I, when I kit something up like this is if I have it, but I only have one skein, then I'll go ahead and order it. And then when I get it, I switch out and I put the older one in the project and the newer one I put in the bag. Um, so, because I don't want to use up everything, you know, I, which is dumb, but I, I want to, if I have it already, I want to keep it in my, um, in my stash, just so that when I'm kidding up things where I don't need like a full skein, like a head, um, that I have it. Now, the other thing is, is I did go through and I looked and, um, if there was less than like 50 stitches or even less than a hundred stitches, um, when I'm kidding it up, I'm not going to use, I'm not going to put the full skein on there because obviously I'm not needing it. And I did kind of take that into consideration as well. Um, 
in ordering. So in other words, if I had a full skein, but it was something that only took 50 stitches, I didn't order a new one. But I, I put it in here still with the, the card so that when I pull like the 102 lengths of floss, then I can put it back away. So anyway, so that order was put in. I think Friday night I did that. And um, it's just floss, so it will arrive quickly. And sometime this month, I will then kit up the hate. Now, I've already done a kidding up a hate video, but maybe if you guys like, you know, are, if that's fun to watch, then maybe I'll do kind of like a craft with me um, video while I'm kidding up the hate. Let me know if that's something that you'd be interested in seeing. Um, it's basically just cutting flosses and putting them on the card and that kind of thing. So I think I'm going to start that next month. Um, yeah, you know, I have, I've realized that especially recently, most of the projects that I've started and wanted to start are all big and meaning they're multiple year projects because I have so many of them. Um, and that's okay. Uh, I just am not at this time being really drawn to littler projects. I mean, I have a bunch of little like Mill Hill ornaments and stuff like that. And I maybe, maybe I should, um, incorporate some of those into my rotation just because so I can get more finishes um so I don't know I'll have to see do I have any little cat ones uh, if I have any cat ones maybe I'll do it next month but I don't know that I do all of these things and no kitties no kitties I have a bigger mill hill at the kitty one um but those aren't particularly fast projects. So who knows? Who knows what I'm going to do? It's a roller coaster ride for all of us. Um, okay. So, I mean, that's it for haul. Um, eventually, as I said, I'm going to have haul to show you with all of the um, Mirabilia Bewitching Pixies and uh, printed fabrics. But I think I'm going to wait and do all those in a video first. And then I'll show you in my regular video. For those of you who don't like watching the extras. Um, okay, so that brings us to the final bit of this video this week. Um, I've said before, April is my mom's birthday month. Um, she's been gone a little bit over a year now. She died uh, last January, January 29th, uh, 2021. So it's been a little bit over a year that she's been gone and I have missed her every single day. I can't tell you how many times um, something happens or, you know, and I'm like, I want to talk to my mom. And, you know, I think about calling her. I think about, you know, it's hard. And I, I mean, I've talked to lots of you guys have given me messages that you still miss your person, you know, mom, dad, significant other, brother, sister, whoever, whoever you've lost in your life that years and years and years and years and years later, of course, you still miss them. And I understand that because I still miss my dad and he passed away when I was 10. But it's just not quite as immediate as my mom. <laughs> um, but anyway, April is her birthday month. Her birthday is April 18th. And I thought in honor of her birthday, since I can't give her presents this year, um, that I will give stuff away to you guys. So I showed you kind of a preview of all of the charts I have. I think 21 things that I pulled. Um, so that means uh, five a week. Um, so I'm going to give these things away. I'm going to just give you a code word for each thing. If you're interested, then um, please put it in a comment. And you don't have to like make a clever sentence, although it's very, very entertaining when you do. Um, but I'm going to use just the random comment picker um, probably before the video or I don't, maybe during the video, I'll just do it. Not that you can really see. Um, I promise I'm not cheating. Um, but um, I'll just do a random comment picker and um, mail these out to you. Now, um, I'm doing this in such a way that I can just mail them. Um, I don't want to have to go to the post office. Um, so I'm going to say, please only US uh, people, because I just want to be able to stick the postage on it and mail it from my office. Uh, office. Um, and I will put the disclaimer that I've heard other people say that, you know, there is no value on these things. If it gets lost in the mail, if it doesn't arrive, I'm not replacing it. So 
it's just a giveaway. Um, as I said, some of these are used charts that I have stitched or other people have stitched, and some of them are um, new. And um, if you don't want the condition that it's in, don't don't request it. It's simple. Okay, so the ones that um, we're giving away this week. Oh, also be over 18 so I can get your um, address. You guys know this stuff. And then don't say giveaway prize, all those words that bring the trolls out. Um, you know, hopefully it's just people who watch my channel, who stitch, who enjoy it, that are going to enter. Okay, so the first one is this B, is uh, Country Cottage Needleworks B Virtues. Code word is B, B E E. I just finished stitching this. It's a very cute little chart. Uh, second one. This is from Dames of the Needle. Fourth of July in a jar. Um, and let's just use the word July. Cute little sort of primitive. Okay, this one. This one's hard for me to give away because I really love this series, but I'm just being realistic about my time. Um, this is Cottage Garden, Garden Sampling, part of the Songbird Garden series. This is Sing for Joy. And let's just use the word joy. Um... Okay, this is from Amy Bruken, Amy Bruken Designs. I think it's Bruken. Um, there's two charts on here. Let's just use the word weekend. So the top one says weekend forecast cross stitch with no chance of cleaning. <laughs> it's me every weekend. And then the second one is hello Saturday, I love you. Oh, I just have to say, do you guys see how cute my nails are? This is from a company called Glamour Made. And um, you know I use like glue on press on nails. That's what I do. And um, I found this company. They had pretty good prices. And I went and I searched cats and I got a bunch of different cat, cat styles of nails. And these are all kind of like uh, masterpiece paintings with cats. Um, okay, and then the last one is Lion of Judah. This is a needlepoint. Um, it's sort of a needlepoint kind of canvas. Um, you do do it on needlepoint. Um, needlepoint canvas. And um, let me see what size piece you need. Amazon just drop stuff off and oh we'll use um, lion as the code word for this okay so that is it again B uh, weekend joy July and lion. Okay, so we will draw those next weekend and um, good luck. I hope you get what you want. Oops. Okay, and I think I think that's kind of it for today. Um, I have groceries coming any minute. And uh, yeah, so it's a good time for me to uh, start uploading. Uh, last week, it took a long time for my video to upload. Sometimes it goes like that. And other times it can take hours and hours. So I don't know. I pretty much do my video about the same time every Sunday. Um, I got up at 730 this morning, but I feel like I was slow going. So I don't think I actually started my video till about nine. But um, but yeah, same thing last weekend, but it took like till like afternoon two one, two o'clock for it to upload. 
I don't know. I don't know what it is. Maybe a lot of people do videos on Sundays, but anyway, until I see you guys again, I hope that you have a wonderful week. I would love to hear what you think about the uh, little golden book, um, journals. Um, and I'm going to have so many, I mean, is that something that you guys would be interested in, in me giving one away on the channel or two or five? Um, is that something that you would be interested in getting? Um, you know, let me know. Let me know um, if you think that this is a worthwhile endeavor. Um, I mean, I'm enjoying it and I'm going to be giving away to like all my friends. So, um, but you know, you guys are my friends too. So are there any that you would be interested in? And if you would want me to give something away on the channel, is there like a, a story or something that you especially love? Um, I would love to hear that too. I have Gosh, I have Dumbo and Winnie the Pooh and Aladdin and a couple Cinderella's and um, and as I said, I have some Christmas ones. I have Frosty the Snowman and Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Um, I might actually, if I was going to put those together, I might get some Christmas papers, which isn't something I would normally get. But, you know, if I'm going to use them for this, um, it would work. Anyway, let me know. Let me know what you think. And then please enter for the giveaways if there's any of those charts that... Uh, make your heart happy. Um, and until I see you guys again, please remember to be content, be kind, and be crafty. This is Carla. Bye-bye.